with a pounding heart and rapid breath, like a rode a rocket into Earth orbit, 2,000 miles above Moscow streets she knew. Overheated, cramped, frightened, and probably hungry, the space dog gave her life for her country, involuntarily fulfilling a canine suicide mission. Sad as this tale is, the stray husky Spitz mix became a part of history as the first living creature to orbit the Earth. Over the decades, the petite pioneer has repeatedly found new life in popular culture long after her death, and the fiery demise of her Soviet ship, Sputnik 2, which smashed into the Earth's atmosphere 60 years ago. Soviet engineers planned Sputnik 2 hastily after Premier Nikita Khrushchev requested a flight to coincide with November 7, 1957, the 40th anniversary of Russia's Bolshevik Revolution. Using what they had learned from the unmanned and undogged Sputnik 1 and often working without blueprints, teams labored quickly to build a ship that included a pressurized compartment for a flying dog. Sputnik 1 had made history, becoming the first man-made object in Earth's orbit on October 4, 1957. Sputnik 2 would go into orbit with the final stage of the rocket attached, and engineers believed the ship's 1,120-pound payload, six times as heavy as Sputnik 1, could be kept within limits by feeding its passenger only once. They expected Laika to die from oxygen deprivation a painless death within 15 seconds after seven days in space. The Soviet K-9 recruiters began their quest with a herd of female stray dogs, because females were smaller and apparently more docile. Initial tests determined obedience and passivity. Eventually, K-9 finalists lived in tiny pressurized capsules for days and then weeks at a time. The doctors also checked their reactions to changes in air pressure and to loud noises that would accompany liftoff. Testers fitted sea andidates with a sanitation device connected to the pelvic area. The dogs did not like the devices, and to avoid using them, some retained bodily waste, even after consuming laxatives. However, some of them adapted. Eventually, the team chose the placid Kadriavka, Little Curly, as Sputnik 2's dog cosmonaut and Albina, White, as backup. Introduced to the public via radio, Kadriavka barked and later became known as Laika, which means barker in Russian. Rumors emerged that Albina had outperformed Laika, but because she had recently given birth to puppies, and because she had apparently won the affections of her keepers, Albina did not face a fatal flight. Doctors performed surgery on both dogs, embedding medical devices in their bodies to monitor heart impulses, breathing rates, blood pressure and physical movement. Soviet physicians chose Laika to die, but they were not entirely heartless. One of her keepers, Vladimir Yazdovsky, took three-year-old Laika to his home shortly before the flight because he wanted to do something nice for the dog. Three days before the scheduled liftoff, Laika entered her constricted travel space that allowed for only a few inches of movement. Newly cleaned, armed with sensors, and fitted with a sanitation device, she wore a spacesuit with metal restraints built in. On November 3 at 5.30 a.m., the ship lifted off with G-forces reaching five times normal gravity levels. The noises and pressures of flight terrified Laika, her heartbeat rocketed to triple the normal rate, and her breath rate quadrupled. The National Air and Space Museum holds declassified printouts showing Laika's respiration during the flight. She reached the orbit alive, circling the Earth in about 103 minutes. Unfortunately, loss of the heat shield made the temperature in the capsule rise unexpectedly, taking its toll on Laika. Russian medical doctor and space dog trainer Oleg Gazenko revealed in 1993 that she died soon after launch. The temperature inside the spacecraft after the fourth orbit registered over 90 degrees. There's really no expectation that she made it beyond an orbit or two after that. Without its passenger, Sputnik 2 continued to orbit for five months. During and after the flight, the Soviet Union kept up the fiction that Laika survived for several days. The official documents were falsified. Soviet broadcasts claimed that Laika was alive until November 12. The New York Times even reported that she might be saved, however, Soviet communiques made it clear after nine days that Laika had died. Scientist believes that the humane use of animal testing spaceflight was essential to preparation for manned spaceflight. There were things that we could not determine by the limits of human experience in high-altitude flight. 
scientists really didn't know how disorienting spaceflight would be on the humans or whether an astronaut or cosmonaut could continue to function rationally. For Laika, even if everything had worked perfectly, and if she had been lucky enough to have plenty of food, water and oxygen, she would have died when the spaceship re-entered the atmosphere after 2,570 orbits. Ironically, a flight that promised Laika's certain death also offered proof that space was livable. The story of Laika lives on today in websites, YouTube videos, poems and children's books, at least one of which provides a happy ending for the doomed dog. Laika's cultural impact has been spread across the years since her death. The Portland, Oregon, Art Museum is currently featuring an exhibition on the stop-motion animation studio Laika, which was named after the dog. There is also a vegan lifestyle and animal rights magazine called Laika Magazine, published in the United States. The 1985 Swedish film, My Life as a Dog, portrayed a young man's fears that Laika had starved. Several folk and rock singers around the globe have dedicated songs to her. An English indie pop group took her name, and a Finnish band called itself Laika and the Cosmonauts. In 2015, Russia unveiled a new memorial statue of Laika atop a rocket at a Moscow military research facility. During the Mars Exploration Rover Opportunity mission in March 2005, NASA unofficially named the spot within a Martian crater Laika. Soon after the flight, the Soviet Mint created an enamel pin to celebrate the first passenger in space. Soviet allies, such as Romania, Albania, Poland and North Korea, issued Laika stamps over the years between 1957 and 1987. Laika transformed from a normal street dog to an enduring symbol of sacrifice and human achievement. Share her story with other animal lovers. May her ashes be spread all over the earth.